Just doing a uh, quick video here, talking about the uh, Spyderco Tough. Uh, I think this knife has been out for about a year, and uh, I've wanted it for a long time. I just never picked it up, and uh, I got it a few weeks ago. Uh, it's still relatively new to me. Um, I just want to talk about it a little bit. Um, I'll just go over some stats first. The overall length is 8.85 uh, inches long, so it's kind of kind of a bigger knife. The blade length is uh, 3.7 inches. But the cutting edge is only three, and um, when we start to look at the blade, you'll see that it has a has a pretty big choil, so the cutting edge is shortened up a little bit. Um, close, it's 5.15 inches. It uh, feels really good in the hand, but it's definitely big and beefy. Comes in at 6.3 ounces. Uh, the blade thickness is four millimeters, which is uh, a substantial blade. Um, it's kind of why they call it the tough. It's supposed to be a, a hard use, tough, uh, beefy, overbuilt, kind of hard use folder. Uh, so it would be perfect for sitting on the couch and flicking while I watch TV. Um, the handle material, it uh, is G10 on the presentation side, and then the lock bar side is made out of titanium. Uh, the blade itself is made out of a CPM uh, 3V, and that is a powdered steel. Uh, it gives you a little bit more uh, of a uniform consistency. And uh, 3V is uh, it's harder than uh, woodpecker lips. It uh, is uh, resistant to uh, chips. Uh, it's supposed to have terrific uh, toughness and uh, edge retention. And it's also supposed to resist corrosion pretty well. But one of the things that I read is that when it does get some corrosion on it, it tends to pit. So it's more than just like surface rust. It actually uh, digs into the steel pretty good. One of the things that you kind of notice is that uh, there's no screws here. I took the pocket clip off. I'm a lefty, so I carry left-handed, and I took it off the right-handed side to switch it. And uh, I actually like carrying some knives uh, without the clip in my pocket. And then this is one of those that uh, I'll just carry in my pocket probably. I don't think I'll I'll carry it with a clip. And um, it fits in there pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's thick and it's heavy, but for right now, uh, I'm just enjoying pocket carry on that. This blade is uh, gorgeous, and it has, uh, I guess it's like a satin finish, and you can see the grind marks on it, but I just think it is, looks so nice. It has a full-length fuller, and I think that is to lighten the blade up a little bit. I don't know if it adds some rigid, rigidity or torsion strength, but um, some people think it's kind of goofy looking, but I, I like it. And one of the other things that you'll notice is that the angle of the blade is canted from the handle, but I think that, that makes for good cutting. It, it fits in the hand really well. I can't see cutting with it like this, though. I've used it to break down a lot of boxes. Um, we have a lot of snow going on where I live, and I just got a new snow blower, and I used it to break out of the box last night. And uh, you can't see a mark on that on that blade. It looks as new as it did when I got it. But uh, I was choked up using this choil, and then I had this thumb up here as I was breaking down the boxes, and it worked really well. You can see it's got uh, a pretty serious tip on there. With a little bit of an indent on either side from the fuller, so it kind of looks like a spear point. I'd imagine that it uh, is a good thrusting uh, blade that penetrates <laughs> quite well. There's not a lot of blade area that we talked about. So, again, I, I think this is really for more hard, you know, where you really got to get a grip, get in there and do some precision cutting. The uh, Let's talk a little bit about the construction. So, uh, as I mentioned, this is a, a thick... TI, this side is a stainless steel and G10. It does have a backspacer that goes about halfway up and that has some open construction here. I, I prefer to have standoffs, but you know, it's six in one, half a dozen another. And then if you take a look, you can see, in, I don't know if you can see in there, you see two little screws. Uh, it has a stainless steel piece connected to the titanium lock bar. So the lock bar interface is actually stainless steel, which is good because you don't have TI sticky problems and uh, this lasts a little bit longer. So um, you don't get some of the deformation issues that you do with TI and a harder steel. I, I think with uh, the 3V it's probably important to have the steel interface on that. Um, if you take a look at that lock bar, that's really short compared to say um, other knives. Like if you take a look at this uh, uh, Strider SNG, you'll see that the, the, the lock bar is longer, so that makes it a little bit more flexible. The uh, the tough is a lot harder to disengage. Um, I can still do it one-handed, and uh, I don't know if that's a safety issue or not. A couple of folks posted on uh, YouTube and, and on some of the forums about cutting themselves, uh, trying to, to disengage a lock one-handed. Um, I'm the one left-handed. Anyhow, this is um, a Torx uh, pivot screw. 
that uh, it's, you know, it's kind of handsome. <laughs> I like it. Um, it's easy to adjust. I haven't had to adjust it, but uh, it's a standard size and it can be adjusted. It has nice jimping on this thumb ramp. Um, but again, I you know once you start to choke up on it, I mean I guess you could hold it like that. I, I, it really felt a lot more natural to hold the knife like this as I was cutting with it. I like these, you know, I don't know what else to call them. I say it looks like a golf ball divot that are up and down the side. I think it really adds to the character of uh, of the knife, and it probably lightens it up a little bit. I don't think it would lighten it up that much. But uh, they're on both sides, and maybe it adds to uh, to the texture here. I'm just not 100% sure. But uh, I do think it is different looking, and uh, as part of that, I kind of think it's a little goofy looking, but I, I really like it. I, I think it uh, is an attractive knife, and, uh, and the fact that it looks different is one of the reasons I like it. Do some comparison. Uh, some comparisons here. As you can see, the blade is close to an SNG blade, which I believe is also four millimeters thick uh, in terms of cutting. And both knives have a big choil. Let's see if I can line them up at the pivot. The handle is a little bit longer here, and the, and the strider tends to be more straight. Uh, this would be a left handed Spider Co. military. Um, so it's about the size of the military, but the military has a lot more cutting edge. And then, I don't know if you want to call this a choil or not. I, I, I would. But the choil seems to be more with the handle and the blade than opposed to just really with the blade. So that's some, some size comparisons there. Oh, and I have one more I was going to compare. Um, this is a Spyderco Endura, but it, it's a waved Endura, so you can see... Um, the Endura is, again, of similar size. Actually, it's a little bit longer um, if you line them up at the pivot. A lot of times people do compare knives from the tips or from the from the butts of the knives. I, I tend to do it from the pivot because I think that that's uh, probably the most accurate representation. But, uh, you know, I could be wrong. Not an expert by any stretch or means. Anyhow, that uh, really covers everything I was going to talk about. I really like the knife. I'm glad I purchased it. Um, like I said, it's a little heavy. It's a little bit beefy. Um, it is, it, it's much heavier in the pocket and more sizable in the pocket than any of these. Um, but for some reason, like I said, I, I prefer to carry it without the clip. We'll see. Maybe I'll put it on there and try it out and see how it goes. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks for watching.